everybody, this is Joanne. Today's book reminded me a lot of some of the great chemistry professors I had, especially during college, who could make chemistry come alive by applying it to practical aspects of your life. And I remember when I learned about how cyanide acts on the mitochondria in the body to stop respiration and result in death, all the way down to the molecular level. This was quite fascinating. And today's book is about how chemistry can harm us in the most horrid of ways. And it's a book written by Deborah Bloom, who has won a Pulitzer Prize in the past for her work, called The Poisoner's Handbook, Murder and the Birth of Forensic Medicine in Jazz Age New York. I love this book. I listened to it on audio. I couldn't stop listening. It was that marvelous. Um, because I'm especially um, nerdy about uh, how things react with the body, like our body's responses to external factors are particularly fascinating to me. And what's more fascinating than learning about how people died? Now, this book reads like a murder mystery and a history. Uh, fictional history, but it's all nonfiction. It's really amazing. So during Jazz Age New York, we were looking at things like prohibition, where people were then uh, forced to go to speakeasies to get their buzz, and some of the ways uh, that they were getting drunk um, actually killed them using wood alcohol instead of uh, regular ethanol. Um, but also, there was a lot of destitute poverty and people wanting to kill others for revenge, but also to gain their inheritance or to get a hold of their life insurance policy. And one of my favorite stories really has to do with the, the man that would not die, and <laughs> that's worth the book alone. But I especially loved the science part of it, how different poisons act on the body and which ones are uh, more subtle, harder to uh, detect uh, for poisoning than others was also quite fascinating. Of course, I have no plans to be murdering anyone anytime soon, so you're all safe. But of course, now uh, these poisons are more highly regulated. We can't get a hold of them. What I also learned, um, I never knew uh, that forensic mes medicine was uh, really came about during that time. I, I just had no idea when it came about. So I learned a lot about that, learning about um, the first coroner, Charles Norris, and uh, the first toxicologist, uh, Alexander Gettler, in New York, working with the New York uh, Police Department to help solve murders uh, for them. And it, it, just the struggles they had to go through to be able to set up this. And using forensic medicines, of course, in very old school style where they're uh, distilling things. And now, of course, we have a lot of electronics that speed things up. Very, very fascinating book. Um, I don't, I don't know why anyone wouldn't love this book unless they don't like murder mysteries. Um, but these, the, every event that happened, every murder that happened actually happened. And so there's a story behind it. So um, I am highly recommending this book. It was just fabulous uh, listen. And um, I think you should go pick it up. Uh, the Poisoner's Handbook by Deborah Bloom. Thanks. Bye.